What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today I'm going to help you choose between the iPad Air 4 and the 2020 iPad Pro. These are the two most powerful iPads and most users who are looking at this range have either decided that the iPad 8 is not enough for them or they simply want features like a fully laminated display, more storage options, better camera and speaker system, and Apple Pencil 2 functionality. All of which and more I will discuss in this video. I will go over some of the specs, but I'm going to focus on real life user experience and the things that I actually think matter. So let's put these two head to head and see which one is the right fit for you. The first thing that I think could help you choose is the size. So the iPad Air 4 comes with a 10.9 inch display and the iPad Pro comes in two versions, an 11 inch and a 12.9 inch, which I have here. The iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro 11 inch are practically the same size. And that's actually really nice because you can get the device that you want and you're not stuck with having to buy a 12.9 inch device if you just want these Pro features, but you prefer this form factor. If you want the biggest screen, then the choice is super easy. Just pick up a 12.9 inch iPad Pro and you're all set. It's great to watch content on when you're holding it vertically for note taking. There's plenty of width to work with and you're getting the best display Apple makes for an iPad. If on the other hand, you think this is too big, then we have to dive a little bit deeper into the features but at least we eliminated one option. I say this in other videos, but I want you to think of how you plan on using this. Is this a device that's gonna stay at home or are you carrying it with you to work or a coffee shop or anywhere else you might wanna do some work? These are the types of real life considerations that some people forget to think about when they automatically reach for the biggest and best. And I told the story in another video, but as soon as 17 inch laptops were available, I went out and I got one with a big, bright, beautiful screen. And if you've seen my main workstation, which is over there, that's why I keep pointing over there when I talk about it. The fact that I like a lot of screen real estate isn't gonna shock you. But what I realized was that I never wanted to take that laptop with me because it was so big and heavy. And for the types of tasks that I ended up performing on that laptop, I didn't really need the larger screen. And in actuality, a smaller and more portable device would have been a better fit for me. Next, let's take a look at the design. And this year we see that the iPad Air 4 pretty much looks like an iPad Pro as far as the squared off edges and the smaller bezels. Now, personally, I love how the iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro look. I like the smaller bezels and the cleaner overall look since we don't have a home button like on the iPad 8. I know that for some people, how their tech looks isn't a big deal, but if I'm going to use a device every day, I like the fact that I enjoy looking at it. But like I said, the design is extremely similar and it's not really a differentiator for me. What is a differentiator is biometric authentication. So the iPad Air 4 uses the new Touch ID on the top button. So it requires a physical touch to unlock and authenticate. The iPad Pro has a true depth camera on the front, which enables facial recognition, so it uses Face ID. And this really comes down to preference, how you use the device and where. So I want you to consider things like, are you going to be using this iPad when you're wearing a mask or wearing gloves? Moving on, we already talked about the size of the screen, but now let's take a look at how they're different. Both the iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro have a fully laminated display meaning that the display panel, the touch layer, and the cover glass are laminated into one single piece of displaying glass. And this makes the screen thinner and there's no air gap, and the image looks like it's painted right on the screen, unlike on the iPad 8 where it looks like it's under a sheet of glass. A non-laminated screen isn't something that really bothers me when I'm viewing content, but seeing both types side by side, I do like the laminated display better. It also contributes to a better writing and drawing experience because the tip of the pencil is closer to the image so it feels more organic. Now, the biggest difference between the two models is the refresh rate. The iPad Air 4 is limited to 60 Hertz and the iPad Pro is the only iPad to have a higher potential refresh rate of up to 120 Hertz. It uses Apple's ProMotion technology, which Apple says offers more fluid scrolling, greater responsiveness, and smoother motion content. It's also responding to the type of content that's being displayed, and then in real time adjusting the refresh rate in order to conserve battery life. 
Okay, so fine, now you know the specs, but does this actually matter in real life? And can you really tell the difference? I'm gonna start with the second part. Yes, you can tell the difference. If you're used to the iPad Pro and you go back to the iPad Air 4, even if you didn't know the specs and you couldn't verbalize it, you'd notice the difference. And if I gave them to you side by side, you could see that one of them scrolls more smoothly than the other. You'll also notice it when you're opening or closing apps, or again, anytime you're scrolling within an app. Okay, so it's better, but is it $150 worth of better? That's gonna be up to you. And I'm saying 150 bucks because I'm comparing the 256 gigabyte Air 4 to the 256 iPad Pro 11 inches. And also the 150 bucks doesn't all go to the screen. There are some other features that I'm gonna talk about. If you're doing things like gaming where you have the option for a faster frames per second setting in your game, 120 Hertz is kind of nice. If you're not gaming, you're going to notice the difference mostly when you're interacting with the UI. So opening and closing apps, then scrolling on the web pages and documents. And I want you to let me know in the comment section, are there other things that you do on your iPad where you think you would enjoy 120 Hertz? Now, regardless of which of these iPads you get, please put them in a case. If you're not new to my channel, then you've seen me talk about cases because I'm not the most careful person and these are expensive devices. And right now I'm using the Alpha from Zugu case and I test a lot of cases and this might be the best made case so far. The outer shell has a premium feel and a leather texture to it. The interior is microfiber and there are airflow vents built into the back panel which allowed the heat to dissipate. The bumper feels really strong, but also like it would give a little if you drop it, so it will absorb some of that impact instead of transferring it to the iPad. And this case is supposed to withstand a five foot drop onto cement, which I hope to never test. All the ports, buttons, speakers, and cameras are accessible, and the fit is super precise. And I keep going back to how nicely it's made because it's not the cheapest case that I've used, but as soon as you hold it, you notice that it has such a luxurious feel. I might be weird in this, but texture is really important to me. So with things like clothing or even a computer mouse and definitely with my iPhone and iPad, I love having a case that feels super nice. All right, so it's durable, it's stylish, but like, what about features? First, it has a sleep cover. So the iPad automatically wakes up and goes to sleep when you open and close the case. Next, we've got eight different magnetically secured height adjustments on the back, so you can always have it at just the right height, depending on what you're doing. If you're watching content or making a video call, which I'm gonna talk about in the next section about cameras and speakers, again, it's just really nice and easy to get it at just the right height so you can get the framing that you want. Now, another important feature for me is how this case accommodates for the Apple Pencil. And this case has two spots. One is on the side. The pencil can still charge wirelessly. And because of the way it's designed, the pencil doesn't fall off. The other is on the back which you can use if you want an even more secure stowing option. I'll put links in the description to where you can learn more about this case. And if you check it out or get one, please let me know what you think. So next I wanna talk about the camera systems and speakers. And in both cases, the iPad Pro has the advantage. I wanna mention one more time that the 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pros are identical in terms of features. So you're getting the same speaker and camera systems with both, you're just getting a larger display with the 12.9. The iPad Air 4 has a wide 12 megapixel camera, which is very good, but the iPad Pro has the same wide 12 megapixel camera and an ultra wide 10 megapixel camera. So you're able to zoom out and capture more of the scene. The iPad Pro also has a LiDAR scanner, which is very useful with things like augmented reality. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely go with one of the iPad Pro models. Will these advantages really matter to you in real life? Will depend on whether you actually use your iPad to take photos or shoot video. Personally, I end up using my phone for that more than my iPad. So please take into account how you plan on using yours. Now moving on to the front facing cameras, the iPad Air 4 has a seven megapixel FaceTime camera and the iPad Pro has a seven megapixel true depth camera, which as I mentioned earlier, enables face detection, but also has features like portrait mode, portrait lighting, and emoji and Memoji. Both worked really well for me for video calls, which for how I use the iPad was their main use. So now let's talk about the speakers. The iPad Air 4 has a two speaker system and the speakers are placed on the top 
and the bottom. So when you're in landscape mode, you get a stereo surround sound experience. The iPad Pro again has the edge with a quad speaker system. So it's got four speakers and each one of them is controlled independently and it definitely creates a more immersive audio experience. When you're watching content or playing games, there's a noticeable difference when going from the Air 4 to the iPad Pro. And like with all the other features, it's a matter of how much this improved audio experience helps in justifying the price increase. The next features that I wanna talk about are compatibility with the Apple Pencil, keyboard, and other accessories. Both the iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro use a USB-C port, and they're compatible with a second generation Apple Pencil. This design is more comfortable in my opinion. It's much less likely to roll off the desk because it's got the flat edge. It offers the double tap functionality for alternating between tools, and it pairs and charges wirelessly. Now, the one advantage that I would give the iPad Pro has to do with its faster refresh rate, which may lead to a more responsive Apple Pencil functionality. Now, as far as the Apple keyboards, the iPad Air 4 and Pro are both compatible with the Smart and Magic keyboards. So the only advantage that I would give the iPad Pro is with the 12.9 inch model where the Magic keyboard is larger and more comfortable to use. Back to the USB-C port, there's a lot of versatility in terms of expanding functionality. With a USB-C hub, we can connect several devices at once. We can still provide power. We can connect both models to an external monitor. And we can also use the USB-C pass-through feature in the Magic Keyboard, so that way we can charge the iPads and use an accessory at the same time. Next, I'm going to very quickly talk about processing power. And I always feel like I need to add a disclaimer here because for what most people do, both of these devices offer plenty of power. So the iPad Air 4 uses the A14 Bionic chip and the iPad Pro uses the A12Z Bionic chip. The iPad Air 4 is more powerful for single core processing with a Geekbench score of 1588 versus 1119 on the iPad Pro. When we look at multi-core processing, things shift in favor of the iPad Pro with a score of 4718 versus 4156. So if processing power is a deciding factor for you, you'll want to look at what tasks you'll be performing and whether they'll get a significant benefit from a faster single or multi-core environment. The iPad Pro also has more RAM with 6 gigabytes versus 4 on the iPad Air 4. An example of where this might matter is if you're using Procreate, where you'll be able to have more layers on the iPad Pro. If you're using an eight and a half by 11 canvas, then you'll get 75 layers on the iPad Pro versus 59 layers on the Air 4. So when you make a decision, if it's not just based on the size because you like having a larger tablet to draw on, is the difference between 75 and 59 layers meaningful enough for what you do. All right, before I move on to the storage options, if you like what you've seen so far and have gotten value from this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. It helps the video and the channel and it lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And if it's your first time here, hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay up to date on all the latest gear and tutorials. Now let's talk about the storage options and how much storage you actually need. The iPad Air 4 comes in 64 and 256 gigabytes, and the iPad Pro gives us four options, starting at 128, going to 256, 512, and all the way up to one terabyte. If you're only using the iPad to view content and surf the web or even download some games, 64 gigs is gonna be plenty. The system files use up about 12 gigs of storage, leaving you 52 gigs of free space. As an example, a game like PUBG takes up a little over three gigs and Call of Duty takes about four and a half. If you plan on taking a lot of pictures or shooting a lot of video with your iPad, then you're gonna want more storage. You'll also want more storage if you plan on doing photo and video editing with files that you shot on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, because most of the time you're required to copy those files onto the iPad before you can work with them. Now, how much space you actually need will depend on whether you're using 1080p or 4K video, and even then how much of it, as well as how often you want to offload the content once you're done editing. I always recommend that you look at your current work to get an idea of how big each project tends to be and then how many projects do you work on at once. One other thing to think about is whether your specific use of the device will require you to store large files. If for your job you need to 
download and store large video files to either share with clients or just to have as a reference, keep that in mind. All right, so hopefully this comparison between the iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro helped you pick the right iPad for your needs. The iPad Air 4 starts at $599, the iPad Pro 11 inch at $749, and then the iPad Pro 12.9 inch at $999. And remember to check the links in the description for any specials and student discounts. If there are other aspects of the iPad that you wish me to cover or compare, please let me know in the comment section. And I really hope I was able to give you a good comparison of the iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro. If I did, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. And you know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon. And yeah, the iPad is going right back in the case now that I'm done talking about it. People always ask me how I break the iPad. I don't know how I do it. I just know that I do it. Same with my phone. I just drop them. I must just, I don't know. I just know that I do. Boom, done. This case is great. You should definitely check it out. It's really nice. I like it.